Hi there, and welcome to my speed drawings of history mysteries, where I show you how I drew real-life historical figures that I think had superpowers as superheroes in a comic book. I want to draw four different superheroes, the first one being the lightning rod ranger, Roy Sullivan. He was a park ranger from 1942 to 1977 where he got struck by lightning seven times and lived. He also says that he fought off 22 bears. One time he got struck by lightning, his hair caught on fire, and a bear tried to eat a fish that he caught in a lake while he was fishing. And he still fought the bear off while his head was on fire. So I thought I would draw him as a superhero that could redirect lightning. He at one point thought that there was this malevolent force constantly trying to shoot lightning at him. So many times did he think, oh, that storm cloud's going to chase me down and shoot me with lightning. And that actually, it happened twice where he actually did get struck by lightning. Roy carried around a bucket of water because he was so afraid of lightning strikes that he would be, oh, I'm going to get my hair caught on fire, so might as well carry around a bucket of water in my car all the time. Also, I gave him a scythe because when he was a kid, he says that he was struck by lightning for the first time while he was helping his dad out in the agricultural fields. But the lightning strike missed him and instead hit his scythe. It was the only time that he was struck by lightning and wasn't injured. So I was thinking, what if he went back and got that scythe and used it as a weapon against the malevolent force that he thought was trying to get him in the end? For the rest of his design, I gave Roy a park ranger outfit and some classic western boots because he thought of himself as a kind of cowboy. I also wanted his head to kind of be designed with that, oh, his hair caught on fire sort of look, which makes him look a lot like the Ghost Rider, but with lightning powers. So I gave it a very bloomed out, super saturated, glowing effect, while these crowd of bears, this absolute avalanche of bears was chasing him down. And you know, I'm a big fan of animals and I don't think bears are the bad guy here, but I do think that monsters behind him would look cool. So I kind of made it a sort of monstrous version of, of bears maybe being possessed by that evil storm, constantly hunting him down. I also wanted to keep a theme of a color for all of these different illustrations. And so but the theme for this one was purple. I also made his skeleton glow out from the inside. And I wanted to find a perfect way to show that he was glowing from the inside out. And here is the final version with all the evil bears and the evil eye of the storm coming after Roy Sullivan, the human lightning rod. God, I just thought he was a cool guy to draw. Next up, we've got our next history mystery, and that is Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was super cool. I didn't know he was this cool until I started researching him. Harry Houdini might well be known for his magic and illusions and escapisms. However, he was also a ghostbuster. Yeah, he went around trying to debunk psychics and fortune tellers and seance seances. He would investigate them in a disguise and then he would burst out of the crowd and, and take off his disguise and he'd say, ha, I'm Harry Houdini and you're a fraud. This is how you did it. And that was because when he was, when he was younger, his mom died and he was in a lot of grief. So he went to a psychic and he was like, I'd like to speak to my mother from the beyond. And the psychic was like, oh, I've reached her. Oh, she's saying, Harry, Harry, I, I miss you. And that's when Harry Houdini flipped his shit. He was like, you're not real. My mother would never call me Harry Houdini because that's not my real name. His real name was Eric Weiss, and his mother didn't even speak English. So from that day forward, Harry Houdini swore that on every weekend, his main hobby for the rest of his life was to go around and just debunk psychics. And that was really important because back, in, back then, psychics and illusionists and seances were really on the rise, and people were like trying to get a lot of money from people who were in grief. And so he wanted to save people who were in grief, much like he was was. It also got to the point where he ruined his friendship with his bromantic friend, his friend Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the Sherlock Holmes series. Arthur Conan Doyle's wife was a psychic, and he was. And Arthur Conan Doyle, the author, said, hey, uh, I don't know, Harry, uh, you're probably wrong on all this uh, ghosts aren't real sort of stuff. You should really listen to my wife. And Harry Houdini said, Dude, your wife is insane and crazy and you gotta, I'm not friends with you anymore. From that day forward, they became arch enemies. He had an arch nemesis. It's perfect. So I had to put Arthur Conan Doyle in the background. 
Not only did Harry Houdini dress up in disguises to go fight off ghost people and seances and psychics and fortune tellers around America, he also had a sidekick, a detective who helped him go on adventures to fight psychics. Rose Mackenberg was his detective sidekick, and she had way more disguises than Harry Houdini. So I made her a master of disguise while I made Harry Houdini a superhero that had super escaping powers and he could maybe teleport. I don't know. I see him as a sort of uh, Doctor Strange sort of thing. So I had Harry Houdini with his Mysterio-esque powers, and I also put chains on him because he's well known for breaking out of chains. But I also drew Rose Mackenberg fighting these ghosts around him too. Now you might be thinking, Casey, you've been drawing that whale behind him. Why is there a giant whale behind him? Well, one of his most famous tricks was that he burst out of and escaped out of this leviathan. It was one of his tricks. There was a beached whale or maybe it was a squid or a turtle, but he escaped out of it. So I thought it would be kind of a compositional piece to have in the background. And there's Arthur Conan Doyle looming over him, believing in ghosts and everything. And here's the final piece. It's Rose Mackenberg and Harry Houdini, both super magical people fighting ghosts. And it's a true thing from history. I just love him so much. What an interesting story. The next history mystery is one of my favorites, and it was one of my first. It's the Shiloh Super Soldiers from 1862. In one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War, 20,000 people died, and the Union soldiers who survived were like, oh, well, we're probably going to die anyways because it's super cold tonight, we don't have any beds, and we're sleeping in the wet mud, and we've got a lot of wounds and a lot of dying soldiers here, so we're probably going to die of infection. But they didn't die. They woke up the next morning perfectly healthy. Their wounds almost healed a little. And their wounds were glowing blue-green. Nurses didn't know what to tell them, so they thought it was an angel's glow. They thought they were kissed by angels. A couple hundred years later, we now know that there is the glowing bacteria that might have been in the soil at the time. This Glowing bacteria has a symbiotic relationship with a parasitic worm. This is basically the real-life xenomorph. It decides to inject this glowing bacteria into its prey, and it melts their insides, and it puts its babies in it, and then the larva burst out of the chest, just like a xenomorph from the movie Alien. But in this case, it didn't kill the soldiers because we're too big. Humans can't be eaten by this parasitic worm. So instead, it cleaned their wounds. It acted like an antibiotic and it glowed green and blue and it freaked them out. So these glowing super soldiers are perfect for superhero comic books. This super soldier stands over the corpses of his best friends and buddies while he glows as a survivor. And the giant compositional worm is kind of a spirit animal in the background. And here's the final piece. God, it's crazy. He's basically like a goat soldier. And I love, I love it. I love this story. It's so cool. And yes, we do use this bacteria today in hospitals. Our final history and mystery and one of my favorite drawings. Oh my God, I can't get enough of it. Is Agnes Barr, the real life She-Hulk. Back in the late 1100s, two green kids that only ate beans and spoke in a different language popped out of this hole in England. And they, the farmers that found them were like, oh my God, what are these kids? Where'd they come from? Why are they green? Why are they green? And so this real life thing happened and only one of them lived to tell the tale. She eventually learned English and she took on the name Agnes Barr. And when they asked her, where did you come from? People think that she came from a different world and she said that she lived in a world of twilight where the sun didn't shine very often and that she was content there in the twilight. And I thought that was a cool line, so I wrote it in the doorway above her. She may have lost her green skin, but what if she didn't? What if she could be like the Hulk and decide to turn green and get this really quick paced heart rate and fight or flight mode and maybe she would basically be a real life version of the She-Hulk where she actually came from an underground civilization like she did say. Or maybe there's a more scientific explanation for it. Scientists nowadays think that they may have a specific type of anemia because all they were eating were beans. And the language they were speaking might have been a Dutch version from a colony that had been ransacked that same decade. And so maybe they had lost their parents in the invasion. Maybe they had survived in the wolf pits, aka the wool pits. And they were misunderstood as children from an underground world. That being said, their skin was green because they probably didn't have enough nutrients in their body. 
But what if Agnes Barr did come from an underground civilization? What if she went back to that place to find her people? What if she glowed in the dark? And what if she could find where she originally came from in this epic tale of a journey to the center of the earth? They also said that she was a little temperamental and she didn't take orders well. So she's a great heroine. She's so independent. She's so cool. And this is the final piece. God, I love doing this. It's very inspired by Mike Mignola. And I just love the idea that there was a real life She-Hulk. So it's one of my favorite drawings out of the entire history mystery section. Thanks for watching, guys. If you really like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And tell me in the comments if you want me to do another one because I'd love to. I've got a long list of people from history with superpowers, but if you've got any ideas, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I'll be sure to get to them. See you next time!